As I settled into the cozy living room couch, I felt a genuine sense of contentment. Sharing laughter with Mark was one of the few things that hadn't changed in our home. We had just finished re-watching one of our favorite comedies, and he made a goofy impersonation of the main character that had us both cracking up. You've got the voice all wrong, Mark, I teased, nudging him with my elbow. He feigned mock offense. Oh, come on, Katie, that was spot on. As we shared another laugh, the atmosphere suddenly shifted. The door swung open with a little more force than necessary, and Linda stood there, her eyes darting between Mark and me. Is this what you two do behind my back? Flirt and make fun of me? Her voice dripped with sarcasm and resentment. I blinked, confused and taken aback. Mom, what are you talking about? We were just laughing about the movie. Her glare was icy. Don't play innocent with me, Katie. I saw the way you looked at him. Mark tried to interject. Honey, you're taking this out of context. We were just... But Linda cut him off, her voice rising. You think I'm blind? You think I can't see what's going on here? My own daughter, trying to steal my husband. Tears filled my eyes, but I fought to keep my voice steady. Mom, you're completely misinterpreting this. Mark and I have a father-daughter relationship. That's all. But Linda was beyond reasoning. You've betrayed me, Katie. In my own house. I want you out. Mark looked stunned. Linda, this isn't the way. Let's just talk it out. No, Mark. Linda snapped. I've made up my mind. She needs to leave. Now. As the weight of her words sank in, my heart felt like it was being crushed. Betrayed by my own mother. Accused of something so unthinkable. All I could do was choke back sobs and whisper. Fine. Packing my bags that night was a blur of tears and disbelief. How had everything spiraled out of control so quickly? All I knew was that my life had just been turned upside down, and I had no idea where I was going to go. Tears blurred my vision as I drove aimlessly, unsure of where to go. My phone buzzed, and I glanced down to see a text from my close friend, Rachel. Hey, heard about what happened. You okay? Need a place to crash? Gratitude swelled within me. Thanks, Rach. That would mean a lot. I don't know where else to go. As I pulled up to Rachel's house, she was already waiting at the door. She enveloped me in a tight hug. I'm so sorry, Katie. I can't believe she did that. With a shaky breath, I replied. I still can't wrap my head around it. It's like living in some twisted nightmare. That first night, and many nights after, I cried myself to sleep in Rachel's spare room. The pain of my mother's betrayal cut deep and the wound felt fresh every time I thought about it. A few days into my stay, over breakfast, Rachel broached the subject of what I'd do next. You know, there's a diner down the street looking for part-timers. Might be a good way to get your mind off things and save up for a place. Considering it for a moment, I realized it wasn't a bad idea. Yeah, you're right. Thanks, Rach. I'll check it out today. The diner, a quaint little place named Rosie's, became my refuge. The work was hard, but the routine and the camaraderie of my co-workers made it bearable. It was during one of my shifts that a customer, noticing my puffy eyes and downcast demeanor, struck up a conversation. You okay, hun? You seem a bit down. Embarrassed, I brushed it off. Oh, just one of those days, I guess. She tilted her head, giving me a knowing look. You ever thought about therapy? Sometimes talking it out with a professional can do wonders. I considered her words. Therapy had never really been on my radar, but maybe it was time to give it a shot. Thanks for the suggestion. I'll think about it. After some research and a recommendation from Rachel, I started attending therapy sessions with Dr. Monroe. Those sessions were enlightening, to say the least. Katie, it's essential to understand that your mother's actions and insecurities are not your fault. Sometimes people project their fears and doubts onto others. But it hurts, Dr. Monroe. She's my mom. She's supposed to trust and believe in me. I understand, but you need to focus on healing and setting boundaries for yourself. It's okay to prioritize your mental and emotional well-being. As the days turned into weeks, I clung to those words. Slowly, with Rachel's unwavering support and the insights from therapy, I began to rebuild. The importance of boundaries became crystal clear, and I started understanding that my worth wasn't dependent on my mother's baseless accusations. My journey of healing and self-discovery had just begun. The hushed conversations always seemed to grow louder whenever I entered a room. Whispers, glances exchanged, and the weight of judgment pressing on me. 
Did you hear about Katie? Flirting with her stepdad? Can you believe it? I always knew there was something off about that girl. The gossip was unrelenting. Some days it felt like the whole town was against me, but I refused to let their words define me. Every whisper only fueled my determination to rise above it all. At Rosie's, while serving a table of elderly women, one of them remarked, You're the one, aren't you? The girl with the scandal? Choosing my words carefully, I replied, Yes, I am. But I'm also a hard worker, a good friend, and someone trying to move forward. I'd appreciate it if you could see that side of me too. The woman looked taken aback, but then gave a small nod. Fair enough. With the money I saved, I enrolled at the local community college. It was my ticket out of this town, and its suffocating rumors. The first day was daunting, but I was on a mission, to prove to myself and to the world that I was more than just a piece of gossip. In one of my classes, I met Mrs. Robinson, a tall woman with silver-streaked hair and a no-nonsense attitude. She taught anatomy and physiology and had a reputation for being strict but fair. One day after class, she called out to me. I've heard about your situation, Katie. Don't let the small-mindedness of this town hold you back. Feeling a bit defensive, I replied, I'm trying my best, but everywhere I go, people talk. She leaned in, her gaze intense. Then give them something better to talk about. Excel in your studies, pursue your dreams, and let your success be the best revenge. Her words resonated with me, and soon, Mrs. Robinson became more than just a professor. She became my mentor, guiding me through the challenges of college and sharing stories of her own past struggles. I went through something similar in my youth, she confessed during one of our coffee sessions. I was judged, ostracized, but I never let it break me, and neither should you. With Mrs. Robinson's guidance, I applied for a scholarship that would cover my tuition and living expenses. The day I received the acceptance letter was one of the happiest of my life. Congratulations, Katie. I knew you could do it. With tears in my eyes, I hugged Mrs. Robinson. Thank you for believing in me when no one else did. She smiled warmly. Always remember, Katie, it's not about where you come from, but where you're going. Empowered by her words and support, I was determined to rise above my past and carve out a future for myself, one where I was in control and not at the mercy of other people's opinions. Studying for my upcoming exams at the college library, I was engrossed in my books when I felt a tap on my shoulder. Looking up, I saw my younger brother Sam with an uneasy expression on his face. Katie, I've got something from Mom, he said, hesitatingly handing me an envelope. I stared at it for a moment, feeling a whirlwind of emotions. Carefully opening it, I began to read. Dear Katie, I don't even know where to begin. I've come to realize the gravity of my mistake, and I'm deeply sorry for how I hurt you. If there's any chance you could find it in your heart to forgive me, I'd like to talk, mother to daughter, and try to make amends. Taking a deep breath, I turned to Sam. Did she say anything else? She's been a mess, Katie. She knows she messed up big time. A part of me wanted to run back home but another part reminded me of the pain and humiliation I had been through. All right, I decided. I'll meet her, but not at home, someplace neutral. Two days later, I found myself sitting across from Linda at a quiet cafe. The weight of the tension between us was palpable. Why, Katie? Why didn't you come home? She began, her voice shaky. Because, I started, taking a deep breath. You made our home a place I no longer felt safe or wanted. You didn't just accuse me. You tarnished my name and reputation. I was so blind, so consumed by my insecurities, Linda replied, tears streaming down her face. And that's something you'll have to live with. I've learned to set boundaries, to know my worth, and I've found people who support and believe in me, even when my own mother didn't. We sat in silence for a moment, the weight of our words hanging in the air. Can we start over, Katie? I know I can never erase the past, but maybe we can build something new. I took a moment before answering. I can't forget what happened, Mom. While I can forgive, some wounds run too deep to fully heal. I'll always be there for family events for Sam, but I need to build my life on my terms now. Linda nodded, tears in her eyes. I understand, Katie. I just hope one day you can truly forgive me. As we parted ways, I felt a sense of closure. I had faced my past and was ready to embrace my future.
With the support of friends and mentors like Mrs. Robinson, I was determined to achieve my dreams and show the world that I was more than just a piece of gossip. As for Linda, she had to come to terms with her impulsive decision and learn the hard way about trust and judgment. The story has come to an end. Based on Katie's decision, do you believe one should prioritize personal growth and boundaries over repairing broken family ties? Is there ever a right time to cut ties with family for one's own mental well-being? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this story and want more like it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our OSA, our Stories Animated channel. Your support keeps these stories coming.